Next up, we will drop down to our content loader, load content sub. And uh, in here, we can get rid of this sprite batch because we do not want their default. We want to use the one that we created. So remember that is in globals and just sprite batch. I guess I could have just used the one that they had there and put globals in front of it. Um, it's going to be using the graphics device and next step we want globals dot content equals me that's the game dot content all right uh, later on we will be revisiting this uh, to load our textures which is going to be our um, you know tile sets our characters uh, also sprite fonts will be loaded for writing text to the screen and finally sound uh, we'll be able to add music and sound effects to our game and also we will be able to add screens to our screen manager as we'll see in an upcoming tutorial Sorry, I don't want to cram it all into one tutorial. I'll try to keep these rolling so uh, we don't uh, lose interest on the way. Um, unload content. Um, I'm not sure if we want to keep that. I don't think it's really necessary since uh, we're never actually going to be unloading content through that. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Uh, next up is going to be our update sub. This is the root of our game updates. So um, we will have, we can take this guy here. Let's see, I wonder, do we, we're not actually going to be using a game pad, though that is certainly an option if you want to, but in this tutorial, I won't be using any game pads. Wish I had one that I could play with. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, I'm just gonna put this uh, my base update on top, and notice that uh, it's updating on the game time. So as that's rolling along, it's uh, keeping track of the time. Globals dot window focused equals me dot is active. Okay, that will keep track of uh, if our window is focused and active. Um, let's see, next up will be our globals dot game time. Um, since we're kind of handling everything in here ourselves, um, oh, we're just what we're doing is creating a global reference to the game time uh, that's always accessible to all classes uh, instead of just using this one, which is an option I think. I'm not sure if that is a public shared class. But, uh, some other things that we will add in the future, again uh, in reference to our screen manager, which is going to manage uh, various screens throughout the game. Um, and also input will be added here. Um, every every game cycle, that up, every time it updates, um, we want it to check the state of our input devices and things like that to see if we're moving or you know doing menu selects and things like that. Uh, we will get around to that later on when we create our input class. For now, uh, we want to go down to the drawing class. This is where everything becomes visible. Um, <clears throat> so we want to set the render to the uh, back buffer. First off, we're going to go to globals, graphics, graphics device, Oops, set render target equals I'm sorry, you don't need an equals. We are going to set globals dot 
back buffer as a render target. Um, you can use this, uh, you know, this, this clears the, gla the graphics display and uh, if there's nothing to draw, then it's just going to draw this background color. I like to make it a black screen, but you're welcome to leave it on uh, that color or set it to any other color if you want. It's your game. You can do what you want. <laughs> um, so the next step, it's going to go through the mybase.draw. I'm going to get rid of this little comment here. Let's keep things kind of tidy. Um, <clears throat> here's where we will be drawing our screen manager contents later on, but uh, in the beginning, since we have nothing to draw, um, we're just going to be essentially drawing this uh, background color. So first thing that we're going to do is go globals dot graphics dot graphics device. Oh, I was like, why aren't these popping up? It's because I spelled globals wrong. <clears throat> yeah, so graphics device. Um, set the render target to nothing. So first off, we set the render target to the back buffer, clear the graphics device, then set our graphics uh, render target to nothing. And now is where we will actually do our drawing. Um, now if I understand correctly, you know, we've, we've rendered to the back buffer and then we've cleared the graphics device so it's ready for more um, drawing and rendering and then we're going to take that uh, back buffer and draw it to the screen so globals dot sprite batch dot begin now this is how all drawing routines happen in XNA you'll see this all the time anytime you create a drawing routine <clears throat> whether it's for a menu or anything else, you're always going to uh, begin and end your sprite batch drawing. So we could do globals uh, sprite batch. Wow. Can't type any better than I could before. All right, let's see. So we have our beginning <clears throat> and our ending. Now we actually create the sprite batch dot draw. <clears throat> wow. It's getting terrible here. <laughs> and I forgot my globals. I think I'm getting tired. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save my project here. I should probably uh, take a little break for a moment. And now we are going to add the final parameters to our um, drawing method. So we have to tell it what we want it to draw. And that is the first parameter. It's going to usually be a texture or something. In this case, it's going to be our back buffer. All right. Now we have to tell it. Uh, I don't know if you, if any of you followed my old uh, GDI tutorial series from way back, terrible as they were. Um, but much like that, we need to have a destination and a source. And once again, we are going to be relying upon rectangles. So we're going to draw a new rectangle and. <clears throat> It will be drawn to 0, 0. That's going to be the top left corner. And the size that we want it to draw, of course, is going to be our viewport width and height. So we're going to say, um, whoops, not globals again. Globals.graphics.begin. 
dot graphics device dot viewport dot width okay and we're gonna repeat that for the height I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste again uh, for the sake of time all right and then we are on to the next and uh, final parameter of our drawing and that is going to be the color now just um, something I wanted to go over with you here in X and A uh, every time you do a drawing you're going to be ending it with a color value you can use an alpha value with that as well if you want to create a semi-transparent object or a fully transparent object or a fully opaque object um, white is the default color and what that tells it is to use all only the colors that are available in the image that you've supplied so if I had a character sprite <coughs> excuse me if I had a, a character sprite and you know I, I want him to be wearing a, a blue robe or something like that I don't want to be messing with this color value because it's going to draw over that in this case white is always going to be the default it's going to leave the colors uh, the visible colors as they are uh, you can supply different values uh, later on that might be fun to play with something like uh, day and night cycles another wonderful use of uh, these colors is um, something that uh, Calamus One showed me and that is that when you're creating menu templates and things like that it's so much easier and and really better in this case to create a black and white or grayscale image um, and then color it in w using this since most of those are going to have like a solid background or you know something like that or maybe you know semi-transparent uh, you can use the alpha values of the image or you can supply your own alpha values for transparency but um, you could you know use one image for your game you know one say menu graphic and supply numerous different colors to it so uh, that's a that's a great idea it works very well as we will see later on I will be using that for my menu graphics um, but again if you want to just keep things in in the regular colors just use color dot white as that uh, for that parameter okay I am going to go ahead and save my project and if we have done everything correctly which uh, we should have I don't see any errors or anything uh, we should be able to actually run our project and see our game window now so let's go ahead and hit the debug button there and sure enough we have a brand new little game screen with nothing in it but it's ready to rock and roll we are uh, at this point ready to begin adding more features to it uh, things like textures and uh, menus and fonts and things like that so um, just a you know you, you can see the black background there uh, this is what I was talking about in this clear graphics device um, say we left it on uh, the cornflower blue just in the, as an example see is it cycling through and that's a kind of a nice color actually uh, is it cycling through it's uh, loading and unloading the back buffer and other things whoops I mean to make the screen vanish there um, anyway uh, that is really all there is to uh, getting your project established in the next tutorials uh, we will be handling uh, various other startup aspects of the game of course you guys are going to want to get into some graphics and things like that and also input handling and character development and movement uh, so many things to learn I appreciate everybody uh, if you like this video give it a good old thumbs up there I do appreciate uh, all of your feedback and support you guys have been absolutely awesome and I look forward to sharing more with you uh, take care and good luck on your projects. <laughs> All right, bye-bye, everybody.